Hello everyone, Alexa Dunn here, and today I am going to be talking about word counts. This is one of the most frequently asked questions from aspiring querying writers about their work. Is this too long? Is this too short? Can I query? In short, word count matters if you want to be traditionally published. There are genre, category, industry conventions, especially for debuts when it comes to word count. I see people asking all the time, looking for permission to be an exception, and 99% of the time you're not going to be the exception, but I want to not only tell you what those ballpark word counts are that you're going to want to target for different categories and genres, but I want to explain why books typically need to be 100k or less for a debut. Asterix, some small, small, bare exceptions. I'm gonna go over all of it. Very, very rarely are you allowed to fall outside of these standard ranges, in large part because, honestly, when agents see it, it's a huge red flag. So more often than not, when you defy word count conventions, you're actually leading yourself to be an auto-reject. The thing to know up front is that the rules are simply different for an established famous author than they are for a debut author. So when you're going out there looking for information, and examples and exceptions even, it's really not going to be helpful to you to look at these outliers. People are always pointing out big bestsellers in fantasy, for example, and the thing is, yeah, if you're George R.R. R. Martin, you can write a 500,000 word book, but you are not George R.R. R. Martin. You are a debut author trying to break into the industry. Once you prove that you are a talented writer who can do a lot with those word counts and or you are a consistent, steady seller, you can kind of push the boundaries of word counts. It is pretty common, in fact, for an author post-debut to have subsequent books get longer, or even for someone who sells as a debut, so they get their agent and then they sell with a lower word count, a word count within range, then their editor might ask them to add more to their book also why it's kind of dangerous to look at final published word counts even for debuts because they don't always tell you the complete picture of how many words that novel had when they got their agent. There's one big example I can definitely think of where this is the case because people who write YA are always throwing this one out. They love to talk about Children of Blood and Bone and indeed that book is pretty thick but it didn't sell at that word count. I've heard it hovers in like it's either 140 to 160,000 words, but I've heard it sold at 120,000 words, which is actually the top of the possibly accepted range for a YA fantasy asterisk. You're still going to want to query at 100k or less just to be safe, but I'm getting ahead of myself. I am going to give you all of those word count conventions later on in the video. Another thing you really can't do when it comes to getting a sense of standard word counts for books is you can't look at really famous old books. This also comes up all the time, like you see infographics of word counts for books. And they have things on there like War and Peace. My beloved Jane Eyre is on some of those. Gone with the Wind. And way back in the day, yeah, a lot of classic novels were really, really long. But you are an author now. You don't live 100, 200 years in the past. So you have to actually pay attention to word count conventions now. And books are way, way shorter than they used to be. Commercial fiction especially from debuts. Like I said, there are exceptions for very famous writers, particularly fantasy writers. Fantasy generally is one of the key genres that supports higher word counts, but again, much more rarely from debuts. But why, you ask, why? It's so cruel that your magnum opus must be 100k or less, with maybe a little bit of wiggle room to be 120k if you're writing adult fantasy, for example, why you cry. And it's actually for incredibly practical reasons. It's all about return on investment. Anytime a publisher is investing in a debut, they are taking a level of risk. They are paying you money and they are spending money to print your book. Bookstores are taking a risk on you putting your books 
on the shelves. And shelf space is really, really precious in physical bookstores. And so two just very practical things. Longer books are literally more expensive to print. They require more paper, more binding, so on and so forth. And those costs will compound when you have to print up tens of thousands of copies of a really, really big book. And what I have heard from industry professionals is kind of that sweet spot is once you go over about 400 pages in kind of that ballpark, it's somewhere between 400 and 500, that is when the costs go up exponentially for physically, literally printing the books. Well, 400 pages is about 100,000 words. Then they also literally take up more shelf space. So bookstores are going to stock fewer of them. They can fit fewer of them on the shelf. And especially if your book ends up being a, a clunker, if it doesn't actually sell, and it's like this thick, right? Well, this thick of a book, like they can maybe fit six or seven, maybe eight on a shelf. They could be stocking 20 books in that same space instead of your book, which isn't moving. Again, established famous authors, bestsellers earn that width. They earn the cost that it takes to print those books because of the volume of sales they earn back that investment. It's worth printing big ass books for famous established authors because there isn't really a question or a problem of selling enough books, moving the stock on the shelves. But for you, a debut, it's just usually honestly not worth taking that risk. Another reason for this is a ton of current commercial genres and categories just don't demand higher word counts. Like I said, you can always make exceptions for fantasy sci-fi, even the occasional magnum opus literary novel, but a ton of genres and categories, they don't need 600, 700 page books. Genres like thriller, romance, categories like YA, which of course encompass a ton of different genres. They are genres and categories that are all about fast pacing, really tight storytelling and character development. And books that have tight pacing and story don't need to be, really shouldn't be, 600, 700 pages. That is not a tight story. There's just no reason for your average story in those genres and categories to be more than, say, 100,000 words. I will say not only do those readers expect tighter pacing and less navel gazing in their novels, they don't need a ton of kind of navel gazing and world building to enjoy that fiction. Also, honestly, in some of those genres and categories, the reader has a much shorter attention span, especially literal children. You're not going to be able to write a 600 page book for children. You are not JK Rowling. And actually people bring up Harry Potter all the freaking time, but they're referencing Goblet of Fire or Order the Phoenix. And that's when Harry Potter had become a massive international bestseller with movies. But don't forget the first three books were really, really thin. This is the first Harry Potter book. It's short guys, 223 pages. So I would like a moratorium on people who point out, hey, I can write a 600 page middle grade novel because JK Rowling did it. You are not JK Rowling, which... So all this is to say, what are the word count conventions and expectations for a novel? What is the minimum word count required for a novel? So this is where we get into the fun territory of short story versus novella versus novel. Because it's also an area where you're just going to see a ton of exceptions. Animal Farm is only about 30,000 words, and we consider that a novel. We teach it in schools, but really technically it's a novella, but you're not George Orwell, so don't worry about it. So short stories versus novellas is honestly kind of a gray area. I don't write short stories, but I, I know they're short. I know novellas kind of fall in the 20,000 to 40,000 word range. They are like complete mini stories, but they are not as long as a novel. If you have a work intended for young adults and up through adults, and it's less than say 30,000 words, you do not have a novel on your hands. That is going to be a novella, or if it's particularly short, a short story. So I'd say kind of the bare minimum of I wrote a novel 
It's in the 40 to 50,000 range, but I always complain about NaNoWriMo. I mean, it's a good thing, but I complain about the pitfall of NaNoWriMo, which is there's some writers who then think that 50K is a novel. And in just a ton of genres and categories, 50K is not a novel, which you're gonna learn when I give you all of the word counts. I'm such a tease. Kidding, it's just because I have so much to say about word counts. But still, generally, yeah, 40 to 50K, it's like the bare minimum of a novel, but it's only going to be sufficient for a novel in certain genres and categories. So let's talk about the maximums for a minute. So as I mentioned, this is where it gets really, really dicey because people are always like, my fantasy is 250,000 words for a debut. And when they're told, <laughs> you gotta cut it down to 100K, they throw a tantrum, they start citing super famous authors who write 500K novels, and we've already gone over that. But so, what is the answer? If you are a debut author in any category, like adult or YA for certain genres, you cannot go over 120K for the most part. Every once in a while, yeah, you're gonna scooch by with 130 or 140, but to be safe, think of 120K as your ceiling, but it's your high ceiling. Like you're in the cathedral when that's your ceiling. <laughs> because the thing is with queering as a debut, the actual ceiling is 100K. Once you push past 100K when you're querying, when a agent sees a word count that's over 100k and like the closer you get to 120k the more they start sweating and when you get past 120k it's just bad it's bad it's bad because you're triggering red flags as i mentioned what are those red flags why are works over 100k a red flag for an agent higher word counts from a debut querying author indicate that you have not properly edited your book that essentially you are querying something that has not been revised. There are going to be base level story, craft, grammar, etc. issues with your book. It means you're not ready and possibly that you will be difficult to work with because you're just too novice. Really high word counts essentially indicate that you are an amateur writer. Your book probably has a ton of filler, a lot of telling, poor pacing. And on top of all that, because you queried it anyway, you're clearly not up on genre conventions, category conventions. You either didn't do your research or you're arrogant enough to think that you are the exception. All of this is a turnoff. And I know what some of you are thinking. You're thinking, but I'm really tight with my 160K word count. I have edited. I need every single one of these words. And you might be right. And you're gonna have to prove that to the agent. And there are ways to do that. Make sure your query is tight, really well written. Prove that you are a strong writer in your query letter. And of course, make sure that those first pages are really good as well. I do think that people who are true exceptions to the rule prove it in their queries. But most people who query books with really high word counts are not the exception to the rule and they're probably not writing great queries either. It's just a massive kind of amateur mistake to go forth and say, I don't care, my 350,000 word fantasy is amazing and screw them if they don't recognize it. Honestly, it's a red flag for agents. Basically, all of the people who think that they're unicorns and have long, bad books who have queried have spoiled it for the authors who aren't that bad, who have earned every single one of those words over a certain word count. So blame them. And then on the opposite ends, really low word counts can trigger similar but different red flags. Typically just that your story isn't complex enough. Again, that you're not aware of genre and category conventions. You're probably not very well read because you queried something, not being aware that what you're querying isn't a novel. There's less of kind of the red flag of, oh, they don't know how to edit because you don't really have quite enough story to edit. So very opposite problems. And again, it's almost always people who have overwritten, written too much versus people who haven't written enough. 
So now I'm finally going to get into actual word counts. But first off, there is a difference between kid lit, books for children, kids all the way up through young adults, so the young adult category, and of course, the adult market. Generally speaking, adult books, books for adults, adult novels are longer. They're still going to be hitting those maximum ceilings, but there is definitely a range within word counts. I'm going to share two separate lists. The first is Nathan Bransford's list of target word counts, which encompasses a large variety of genres and has young adult and middle grade set aside as their own standalone things. Then I'm going to do my own kind of slightly more deep dive list, breaking down middle grade and YA word count sweet spots for you, just to give you a better target for those categories since Kid lit is more my area of expertise. Then I'm going to give you real, well, as best we can estimate, word counts from debut published books in a variety of genres and categories. So you can kind of pair, oh, that really famous book with their actual word counts. And I'm going to prove to you that you can write a good book that is under 100,000 words in your target category to debut with. So starting off with Nathan Bransford's list, which I am going to have here on the screen. So chapter books up to kind of lower middle grade should be 5,000 to 20,000 words. Fantasy generally should be 80,000 to 120,000 words. General fiction, so just novels, should be 75,000 words to 100,000 words. Historical fiction, 80,000 to 120,000. Literary fiction, 50,000 to 120,000 words. There's definitely a huge spread in literary fiction. Some of them are really short and some of them are really long. Middle grade, 30,000 to 60,000 words, mystery novel, 75,000 to 90,000 words, novella, 20,000 to 40,000 words, romance, 50,000 to 90,000 words, science fiction, 90,000 to 120,000 words, thrillers, 80,000 to 100,000 words, and young adult, 60,000 to 80,000 words. Yes, but no. So this is why I'm also doing my own list, but I'm also going to link you down below to a really great resource. It's from 2011, it's by Jennifer Loughran. So it's a little dated in that she posted it nine years ago and I would make tiny tweaks to some of her word counts, but it's still pretty accurate. And she has a slightly better grasp than Bransford does, who with all due respect, yes, technically, it's a good ballpark for YA to be 60 to 80,000 words, but it's just not quite accurate because you can go up to 120,000 words in select YA genres. You shouldn't, but you can. That link's gonna be down below, but then my kind of YA middle grade count guide that takes into account the sub genre of your middle grade or YA. So for middle grade realistic novels, your, your ballpark is 30,000 to 50,000 words. Middle grade speculative, so science fiction and fantasy, you can definitely go longer. 40,000 to 60,000 words will be your sweet spot. Now, we've seen a lot of upper middle grade get longer and longer. I have heard of cases where upper middle grade books are as long as YA novels. I'd say those are still an exception to the rule, and I do know some agents, including my own, really don't like seeing those crazy high word counts for middle grade, but I do think it's worth acknowledging that upper middle grade is kind of the wild, wild west right now, so every once in a while you can get away with a slightly higher word count on one of those. Next is YA Contemporary. So this one is where I agree with Nathan Bransford, and I think he was thinking of YA Contemporary novels, 60 to 80,000 words. That is a true sweet spot there. But when you get into speculative YA novels, YA science fiction and fantasy, 70K at the lowest, 80K is even better to aim for. And then for querying, you want to try to not go over 100K. As I mentioned though, this is like the little secret, sometimes you can get away with up to 120k for a YA sci-fi or fantasy, but 
it's like a 50-50 chance you are going to be taking in the query inbox that you might set off one of those red flags immediately and it can reduce your chances of getting requests and possibly representation. So when you go over 100k for a YA novel, you that does represent a risk. And then finally I wanted to pull out YA thrillers because now I'm writing them and they definitely have their own sweet spot of 70 to 90,000 words. Again, 70 on the low end. And I pull out YA thrillers because I just, I've gotten a lot of questions about that. There's nothing wrong with a super tight like 70, 75k YA thriller, but you can go as high as like the 90k area. So to close it out, I do want to share some actual word counts from some debut published books, starting with my own because I know what my word counts are, so I can tell you with complete confidence what those word counts are. And that I found the site readinglength.com, I checked my own book, found it to be accurate, and thus I feel reasonably confident giving you word counts from that website for a few other titles that I pulled out. But I will link down below to that site so you can search that site for any book that crosses your fancy. So starting with my YA science fiction debut novel, I queried it at 99,800 words. Yeah, I really, I really did that. But then it sold and published at 95,000 words, which was approximately 400 pages. My YA thriller sold at 77,000 words and is publishing at about 83,000 words. The YA fantasy Wicked Saints by Emily Duncan. I asked her for her exact word count. It sold and published at 97,000 words. Moving into adult fantasy, I actually got this tip from a subreddit. I looked up a discussion on word counts and someone said, you should look to Prince of Thorns by Mark Lawrence for a really good example of a successful fantasy that pubbed under 100K. And it pubbed at 81,000 words, debut fantasy novel, The Bear and the Nightingale by Catherine Arden, 103,000 words. In the adult romance space, I looked up Beach Read. This isn't the author's debut novel, but it's her debut adult romance, 96,000 words. The Hating Game by Sally Thorne, which was her debut, 99,000 words. The adult thriller, Sometimes I Lie by Alice Feeney, 83,000 words. The adult thriller, The Escape Room by Megan Golden, 93,000 words. And finally, I looked up the YA thriller to compare with the adult thrillers. One of Us is Lying by Karen McManus, which was her debut, 93,000 words. So I just wanted to share those as some just very good examples of debut books in a variety of genres that are under 100,000 words. It can definitely be done. They're popular. They've sold well. And those are debuts who, in most of those cases, had to query with those word counts for those novels. Of course, when you go looking, you are going to find exceptions. And exceptions are great. But I caution you to be stubborn about being an exception. The work that goes into trimming your book down to meet these word count conventions, it's good work to do. It's never bad to be really brutal with yourself with editing. And the secret is you can always add things back in later if you get an agent and you sell it. But in a nutshell, to write a novel, I say you should aim for between 70,000 and 100K. You can't go wrong with a book. That falls within that range, but do your due diligence to read and research within your category and genre and do the best you can to hit the word count and do the editing that is going to give you the best opportunity as an aspiring slash debut author. You want your best foot forward in querying, and regardless of your word count, make sure you write a really sharp query that is going to catch their attention. But don't count yourself out because your word count is whack. Let me know down below any questions you have about word counts and give this video a thumbs up if you like it. I will make more kind of meta publishing type videos. And if you're not already subscribed to the channel, go ahead and do that. I post new videos two to three times a week. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching and happy writing.